Good morning, Branches Youth. We are coming to an almost close in our John series. This is our second to last week. Jesus has just encountered Thomas, talked all about Thomas and his doubts being turned into absolute belief. When he realized that Jesus was the Messiah, he said, my Lord, my God incredible encounter now we're seeing another kind of quirky encounter of jesus and his disciples his disciples fishing jesus coming out to them stay tuned this is john chapter 21 verses 1 to 14 and this is the word of god afterward jesus appeared again to his disciples by the sea of galilee it happened this way simon peter thomas also known as didymus once again way cooler name than thomas's Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you, because that is friendship. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is God's word. So we come to this scene where the disciples are right back to where they were before Jesus. They were fishing. They were once fishermen. They were disciples of Jesus, and now they're back to just being fishermen. They're fishing. They're not fishing very well, apparently. Today... It's not so lucky. It says that they went out and it was night. And then there's Jesus early in the morning standing on the shore. You say they see him, but they don't know him. They might even be like, who is this dude staring at us? Like, is that... And then Jesus addresses them. Friends, you guys don't have any fish. No, they answered. We're hungry. We're tired. Peter's getting on our nerves. Now we're getting roasted by some random guy on the shore. <laughs> Jesus tells him this new method. It's super crazy. He says, try throwing your net on the right side of the boat. The reason why he said it is because they were throwing it on the wrong side of the boat. Let's pray. Just kidding. Dad jokes all day. But very well, the disciples could have tried throwing it on the right side before, and it didn't work. So maybe they did it just to humor this random guy on the shore. And when they did, they were unable, I repeat, they were unable to haul the net because of the large number of fish. It went from none to a ton. And then John proclaims, praise God, it is the Lord. And then Peter realizes it's Jesus, apparently no second earlier than John, since John literally writes that Peter realizes it after John mentions it. John is literally such a savage. So Peter realizes it's Jesus, and then G Peter jumps into the water and swims towards Jesus, which benefits him in two ways. Number one, he gets to see Jesus first. Number two, he skips out on hauling in the fish. And then once they get to shore, they see a fire burning on coals with some fish and with some bread. And I cannot help but think that this is a wink at Jesus' miracle feeding the 5,000. He holds the fish and he holds the bread, kind of shrugs his shoulders like, yep, it's me. And Jesus has them bring in the fish that they caught. And after they count, it is 153 fish. 
And you see, this being such a huge number is significant in itself, but scholars believe that there is actual significance to the number 153. First off, 153 is a triangular number. Now deal with me, I'm going to nerd out for just a moment, but a triangular number is the sum of dots in an equilateral triangle formed from and filled by equally spaced dots. So this looks like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way to plus 17 equals 153. And one scholar perceived that a coded numeric relationship between the numbers 17 and 153 and the Dead Sea locations mentioned in Ezekiel where the fishermen will cast nets during the Messianic Age. Messianic Age. What is that? When is that? That is the arrival of the Messiah. When is that? RN. Right now. Jesus is with them. Now you might be thinking, what the actual heck? What were you even just talking about, Austin? I'm on winter break. I am not following along with you at all right now. That's okay. Here is what you need to know. You see, God cares about the details. The miracle is describing all nations coming to know Jesus. And we see this in two parts of scripture. First one, out of Matthew chapter 13, verse 47 the kingdom is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. The kingdom is what Jesus is ushering in with his ministry. Then we see a prophecy in Ezekiel 47.10. Ezekiel the prophet writes, And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it. Their fish shall be according to their kinds as the fish of the great sea exceeding many. What is all this to say? What is the correlation? It is happening. It's saying that Ezekiel is pointing to this moment. Through Jesus, all nations, all people, all are welcomed in, exceeding many, everyone, Ezekiel says. Are you guys still with me? Are you following me? Through the work of Christ, all people are welcomed in. This is what this miracle is pointing at. Jesus came to be the fulfillment of the prophecy in the book of Ezekiel. And I know that this is not new news to you. This is not new news. You and I, we were born in a time when we were already welcomed into the family of God. But the reality is, before Jesus, that wasn't the case. You had to be born and raised a Jew. You had to be an Israelite. Now, it's everyone, all people, all ethnicities, we're in. We made it. Thank you, Jesus. And then Jesus pulls out one of my favorite lines in the Bible. Come and have breakfast. One of my favorite words to hear from my wife. One of my favorite words to hear from my sweet Savior Jesus. Now John records that the disciples did not doubt that it was Jesus. No one questioned him. Jesus took the fish and took the bread, gave it to them, and they ate. Praise God for a good meal. So what does this mean for us? More than just a quirky story, there are implications for our lives that we see from this text of Jesus' encounter with the disciples the third time he reveals himself after the resurrection. First off, we are to welcome Jesus into everything that we do. For the disciples, it was fishing. When they followed in the way of Jesus with their craft, they saw kingdom results. Paul records, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That includes fishing, that includes your sport, your school, your hobbies, and all such things. Jesus beckons us to welcome him into every aspect of our life. For there is no spiritual and secular departments of a Christian's life. I'll say it again, there aren't spiritual and secular compartments of your life. It's all one and the same. It is all with Jesus, for Jesus, and by Jesus. The second thing, another thing, when God's hand is on something, miraculous things can happen. So pray big, pray bigger, and then pray even bigger. And when you pray, write down your prayers. And when prayers are high, when prayers are answered, whether they be big or small, highlight them, and then frequently praise God for the work he has done. Remember the good work that God has done. Constantly reflect on the God, the goodness of God. Amen. Getting excited. Stumbled over my words. Last, number three, Jesus welcomes all people in. 
by his cross, by his resurrection, salvation is available to any and every person. Even to those who seem that are too far from his reach, Jesus' love is sufficient for them. His desire is for a multi-generational, multi-ethnical family of loving persons under him, with himself as the prime sustainer and most glorious inhabitant of the crew. He is not exclusive in the least. He is t entirely all-inclusive. Praise the Lord. Praise God, people. Let's go. So, what do we learn? We are to welcome Jesus into all things that we do. When God's hand is on something, miraculous things can happen. So pray big, bigger and biggest. And last, Jesus welcomes all people in, having made a way for everyone. Jesus is literally the best, and we love him for it. Let's pray. So Jesus, we thank you for the ways that you reveal yourself to us. We thank you for the availability that you have toward us. God, you are totally accessible through the person of Jesus. And we thank you for the grace that we've received by your sacrifice, Lord God, that you welcomed all people in, that you've made a way for us, and that you've given us life and life abundantly, all the way from now to 10,000 years into eternity. We thank you that being with you is something that we get to begin today, and it goes on for forever. Thank you for your love, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have an awesome Christmas. Hope it's killer. Eat a ton. Have fun with family. Be safe. Love ya.